As you get more advanced in PCB design and you start using more advanced hardware on your PCBs, you'll find yourself coming to a point where you'll either need to start creating your own custom footprints and symbols or leveraging other people's symbols and footprints and then modifying them to suit your needs, which is obviously a quicker way of doing it than making your own from scratch. Today we're going to look at two different types of symbols and how you get access to them to be able to modify them. Now what you want to do ultimately is get them inside your own custom library rather than modifying them in the existing library that you got it from, assuming that you have access to that library. What you don't want to do is take a symbol from a managed library and modify it and then lose that change down the line when an update for that library comes out. So we're going to look at two different devices. The first one is going to be this device over here, which is a temperature sensor, and it lives inside a Sparkfun managed library. If we right click on the actual device, go properties, you can see here that it lives in the Sparkfun sensors library and it's called TMP1021. So let's go and find this and find out how we can put this in our own library. So if I go to window and go to control panel, I can go to my libraries and there are two different folders. The libraries folder is a link to your own user libraries inside wherever you've stored all of your Eagle files. And then there's the managed libraries. These are the ones that Autodesk maintain for you. So what I'm going to do first before I go and find the Sparkfun library is I'm going to go to my own library and open up an existing library that I've got already, which I put my things in. And it's called Unexpected Maker. Surprise, surprise. So here it is here. If I right click and I go open, I want to actually have that library open in the background before I do what I do. And as you can see, there's a whole bunch of different devices I've got either created myself or copied in here already that I use. So if we go back to this library list, I'm going to go to the Manage Libraries, go to Spark Fun Sensors, and go all the way down and find this. Here it is, TMP 102. Now, what I want to do, as I said, rather than open it and modify it here, if I right click on this, I can say Copy to Library. And what that'll do is actually copy this complete device into the currently open library, which is my unexpected maker library. So you copy the library, you can see it's doing its stuff. And then when I go to a table of contents, you'll see that I now have a TMP 102, which has the correct footprint and has a 3D package associated with it. And it also has two different symbols. So I've now copied this inside here. I am now free to modify the symbol or the footprint to my heart's content without risking losing it if the Sparkfun sensor library gets updated in the future. So I'm going to save that. Now that's great. What happens if you don't have access to the device you want from the managed libraries? Let's say you copied the device over from a different schematic and project where the library itself isn't available. Well, let's have a look at that now as well. So if I zoom back out, I'm going to go up to this IMU over here, which is a QFN package. If I right click on it, you'll see that it belongs inside a library called testing. Now, I don't have a library called testing. This was taken off a different project, and I want to put this inside my library, but I can't find it on the list of managed libraries. So what I can do is right-click and export it using the export libraries option in Eagle. Now, be careful. Don't do it from the PCB view, because if you do, you'll only get the footprint, not the symbol and the device. So what I want to do is open up the schematic. Here it is here. I want to select it, and then I'm going to go to File, Export, and libraries. Now what this will basically do is export every single thing in my schematic and I don't want to do that right now. Everything is being ticked. These are all the different source libraries I'm using and it says testing but testing doesn't exist anywhere. So if I'm going to select none and I'm going to reselect the testing because I only want this testing library to export. So we want this to go inside my user libraries folder so I'm going to go to where I store that. In my case it's inside Dropbox. I'm going to go to libraries I mean, that's where it's going to put it and it's going to name it the name of my project so in this case it's going to call it tiny pico pro f which is fine that's what we're going to look for so i'll go okay and what that does is creates a brand new library as you can see here and it's doing the import of all the different parts the footprint the symbol a 3d package if there's one and the device great so now if you have a look here, you can see it's a single library called Tiny Pico Pro F inside my libraries folder, and there's one item in here. 
Now that's great. I could just leave it in here and I could always go back to that library, even if I renamed the library to be MPU 6050. But having one library per device seems a little bit wasteful. So what I generally do is copy all of these into my Unexpected Maker library like I did before. So I'm just going to save that down. And just like before, I'm going to go to Control Panel, you know, close the Manage Libraries. We're not using those. I'm going to reopen my Unexpected Maker library because that's my destination. And you'll see now in here that there's a tiny Pico Pro F with the one testing MPU 6050. I'm going to right click like I did before and copy the library. And it's going to put that inside my library, as you can see here, with the footprint and with the symbol. I'm just going to save that. And now I can go back here and delete this. This is just a duplicate. So now I am building a nice assortment of different items inside my Unexpected Maker library. And I'm free to go and modify this footprint if I want to. I can just double click on it takes me to the footprint editor. One of the things I want to do on this particular footprint is to get rid of the bitmap. As you can see, it's a bit chunky and ugly and there's just no need for it. So that's why I wanted to take this footprint and modify it. So there we go. That's how you take a component that you either already have in a managed library or one that you don't have access to the library for and put it in your own custom library so you can modify it and find it again in the future. Thanks for watching. I will catch you all next time. Bye.